Welcome to the show. It is nice to meet you. Uh, thank you so much for coming up. Thank you for having me. I've always wanted to do this. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you did it right there. Yeah, you, that's it. Thank you for coming uh, to New York. I know you're probably coming from L.A., but I, or yes. Australia. L.A. L.A., yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you been spent much time in New York? I spent a little bit of time here. I try to come sort of as often as possible to see the plays that are on and everything. Uh, but my, my parents are here. And uh, one of the, the biggest memories I have coming here was when I was younger, uh, and I came with them. So this is one of my first Where's times. Where's your mom? I'm trying dad? to find them while I'm speaking. Oh, oh hey, there they are. There I see them. Yeah. Uh, hi, mom. Hi, dad. <laughs> Welcome to the Tonight Show. Yeah. It's also their first time. Yes. It's yes, their first time yeah. being on the Tonight Show as well, which so is we're in it. We're <laughs> perfect. We're in it together. When did you come to the city with uh, your, your parents? I think I was eight years old. Uh, and we sort of did all the all the stuff, like all the sites. And I remember my uh, uh, dad sort of surprised me with tickets to a Knicks game because uh, I was a big basketball fan. Oh yeah, where did? Yeah, we were in the nosebleeds up the back. But I remember it was just like <laughs> it was like <laughs> it was the most special experience, though. You know what I mean? It was, uh, uh, didn't, don't you have some news to tell your parents? Yeah, we're going to the Knicks tomorrow, but way closer. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. Way closer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, now, a new season of uh, Euphoria had a giant premiere on Sunday. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. It's become a, a huge, huge hit. Did you, have, did you have any idea that it would be this big the second time around, the second season? No, I, I didn't know. And then they told me this morning that, it, that it, like, it crashed the website and, you know, a lot of people have seen it. So it's, Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. That's why it's so fun. scary. I'll tell you what's scary. You're getting a, your own wax figure at Madame Tussauds. Yeah. Now, I, I'm lucky enough to be on the, I've done it myself as well. It, have you been through the whole process yet? I did. I, I went through the process. And it, it was strange. But the strangest thing is their shirts that the crew wear say, like, paparazzi and, like, and like celebrity. <laughs> so that was the strangest thing for me. Like, you've got all these cameras in front of you. And you've got all these little dots on your face. It looks like like behind the scenes of Planet of the Apes. And, uh, and then these people in shirts that say like paparazzi, like really? celebrity. Yeah, I didn't was, see that. Yeah, it was peculiar. On mine, I... Great people. I don't, I don't know if you have legit people doing that. <laughs> it's like a, a gang of paparazzi. Yeah, a gang of paparazzi. Just like luring you into a ring. It <laughs> like turns figures. out here's your, your wax figures this yeah, big. Yeah, like, yeah, it's a bobblehead. <laughs> Legos, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> This show, Euphoria, I will say, is pretty dark at some parts. Pretty, you know, uh, it must be stressful to, to do a show like this. But I heard that to keep it loose, you would do this thing where you would grab people's phones and just take selfies with their phones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how do you go with that? I like the bit, but what, what is it? Well, it's not even, like, Euphoria specific. I think I was in New York a couple of weeks ago, and I was at a bar, and someone had left their phone sort of on a table somewhere, and I kind of just, like, there's something about it, like, I want them to find it. I have this idea that they're going to have the phone for, like, 40 years, and in 40 years' time, they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to go through my camera roll, like, they don't go through it every day, and be like, oh, my God. Yeah, he took all these... Who, who's that? Who is this? No, they know who you are, but you just <laughs> grab a phone and just... Yeah, like, you don't, but I don't move it, because I don't want to be invasive. So I, so I do the... I do the slide up. Oh, that's Thank very you. nice of you. I appreciate that. It's, uh, it's thoughtful. Yeah, like a pigeon. You well, yeah, that? very thoughtful of you to do that, yeah. Um, in this show, you play Nate, who uh, he's not really a, a good guy. Uh, no. Uh, but uh, at, the, at, the, at the end of Sunday's episode, your character is a little changed, kind of. Well, he, yeah. he gets beat up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But fans, fans were like, well, he had it coming. Yeah, they were stoked. They were yeah, so yeah, happy about and it. Would you agree with that? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is you. I think me as, as Jacob, I, I would love to beat him up. Like, I would love to give him a clip around the ears. But as Nate, you know, I, f I feel very bad for him. <laughs> yes, yeah, because yeah. you are his character. You're playing the yeah, character so well. Yeah, I had well. to get beat up. Yeah, and you don't want to get beat up. But sucked. Yeah. You look fantastic. Thank you for Thank coming you. onto the show. I appreciate this. I think the last time I saw you, uh, you, were, you were with your dad. Your dad was on our show. Yes, and that was a very embarrassing day for me. Why was that embarrassing? Well, I had just gotten off the flight to see my dad, and I came here, and I like, looked disgusting, and I, I was just kind of hiding in the dressing room, and my dad's friend was like, oh, do you want to go upstairs and like, check out the SNL floor? And I was like, sure, like, hope I don't run into anyone, whatever. 
Harry Styles was hosting, and I knew that, but I, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna see him, right? And then the first thing, like, I walked into the room and he was right there, and I literally, like, could not, like, I went into shock, like, I didn't even know what to do with myself, and then I, yeah, I just went into a panic, and then I got back down to the dressing room and started hysterically crying because I was so overwhelmed and just not expecting that. And then you knocked on the door, and I was so humiliated. I hear, like, hey, Dad, it's Jimmy. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. And then I, uh, yeah, so then I just turned and faced the wall, like, thinking, like, maybe if I turn around, you won't notice Recognize I was there, but the room was really small. Yeah. So, yeah, and then, and then you like, saw hey. that I was crying, and I was really humiliated by that for, like, and I still am, like, <laughs> telling it. I'm like, why am I telling you this? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. That's normally the reaction I get when I say hi to people backstage. Right? <laughs> yeah. you, you, you weren't crying t tonight, I will say that, backstage, you yeah. were not crying. <laughs> but why were you nervous for, for Harry? Just Didn't you interview him or interview One Direction? Yeah, I did interview One Direction when I was 14. <laughs> now, what was this? How did you get a chance to do that? I don't even... I had a, a popular Twitter page when I was like 13 uh -huh. and I decided I wanted to become a child journalist and they asked me to interview One Direction on their first trip to America. Wow. And so uh, that, that must be nerve wracking. Yeah, it was like the scariest thing of my life. Yeah. Uh, and I know that you were freaking out before you, right before you were going to interview them and uh, you, you, were, you were upset, but uh, your dad videotaped you. Yeah. Um, well, we talked to your dad, <laughs> and we have a video. If you don't mind us showing this, this is 14-year-old Maude Aptow preparing to interview One Direction. Here we go. <gasps> in 10 minutes, you'll be in the room of One Direction. Let's go. <laughs> what is that? I couldn't even <laughs> say words. Like, they just they weren't coming out. <laughs> Oh, we have a, a picture of you two minutes before you, you were interviewing them. Look at you. You're so emotional. I mean... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, that was you. That was you there. But then this is you actually interviewing the boys, and you did a great job. I don't know if I did such a great job, honestly. Oh, really? Was it bad? I don't think it... I, it couldn't have been good. Did you ever <laughs> listen to it again or play it back? No. No, of course no. not. No, no, God, no. God, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, shortly after that, you, you got to see One Direction in concert. Your, your dad told us this. I did, yes. And, and that must have been fun. It probably went... You probably weren't nervous then. No, <laughs> it was worse then. <laughs> so, we have a video <laughs> of you <laughs> right after the concert. <laughs> So you saw the concert, you had a great time. Yeah. And then this is after the concert with yeah. your family uh, and your sister, and your, here's your, yeah, <laughs> take a look. Mom, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you're fine. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you have good parents. To, to send that video to us, so thank you to, uh, uh, we appreciate that. Uh, how, uh, is the family, everyone good? Yeah, everyone's great. All right, we're fans, please say hi to everyone over there. So, um, I wanna talk about Euphoria. Uh, this is a <laughs> massive, massive, massive hit on HBO. Uh, this season, uh, uh, bigger than anything in the world. Uh, and everyone was talking about like broke ratings, records, all this stuff. Uh, but it's, 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 it's more finding the backstories of a lot of the characters mm -hmm. uh, on this one. Now, what, what can we expect for your character, for, uh, for Lexi? Um, I think you'll see a lot more of my character this season. Uh -huh. I don't know if I can even say anything. I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's, all, it's all exciting, and I think people are gonna be surprised. I it think, like, people <laughs> think my character is sort of this shy, like, sweet one, but I think she might be just as crazy as everyone else. Oh, my gosh. No, you're too... No, she's not. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know if I can handle it. Um, you were telling me, though, backstage, that every shot is very technical on that show. It is very technical. So they'll, like, do these long shots where they don't make any edits. So they'll have us, like, walking through the school hallways, and it'll be, like, two minutes without any cuts. So <laughs> if you mess up, the whole shot's destroyed. And I, 
always <laughs> mess it up. So then, yeah, basically... So if you mess it up, they have to do, everyone has to redo the... And, they, and it became like a running joke that I'd always miss my mark. Because they put like a tiny little piece of tape on the ground. And you can't look at it, because then it's obvious you're trying to find it. Yeah, that is true. So you just have to like zone and find the mark. And you're like, so they'll do the tracking shot. And then you got to go like, hey, fat, you know, whatever. Exactly. And they're like, no, over here. And you go, oh, yeah. I'm always hey, like 10 fat. inches off of just the Just a mark. little bit off. But then they were like, they started putting like sandbags and boxes, so I'd like, just like <laughs> walk into it, and it. Yeah, they walk into a wall to hit your mark. Yeah, it still didn't uh, work. Yeah, yeah, I had a, uh, <laughs> I had one line in this uh, Band of Brothers, this uh, miniseries on HBO, and Tom Hanks was directing, and I was, uh, I had to drive a World War II jeep, and then say like, "Hey boys, I'm getting the ammo" or something, and I go, "Great, let's do it." And they go, "Oh, we gotta wait for it to be nighttime." I go, "Nighttime," and. And then he goes, we got to get the extras, and they had 200 extras. I had to drive through all these soldiers trying to find my mark where I'm driving a car to my <laughs> oh, no, mark and bad. then say, I'm bringing ammo. And I was, I was maybe like a mile off the mark. <laughs> so I, I drove in and then just parked. And I go, we got ammo, boys. We got it. And, then, and Tom was way over there. I was like, where is everybody? He's like, dude, you're way off the mark, buddy. Can we replace him right now? He's so bad. Uh, <laughs> But uh, you were phenomenal in this, and uh, uh, and everyone's buzzing and talking about it. Congratulations uh, on, on all the success. Hey.